Today, Micro Center pays what for an RTX 4090? GPUs are disappearing. AMD just released a world first and RX 8000 support is here. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, I actually want to get your opinions on this one. As you can see right here, it says Microsoft recently offered just $700 trade-in value for an RTX 4090. More specifically, it's the MSI GeForce RTX 4090 Gaming Trio, which right now, if we were to go to Micro Center, we can see it's worth after taxes right around two grand. And obviously that is a pretty far cry from the $699.95 in evaluation that it gave them. I mean, we're talking less than half here. This is definitely giving me some GameStop vibes. But at the same time, is that not all that bad? When we look over here, it does kind of look to be the case. You can see right here, this one still has a day left. This is the soonest one that I could find for a 4090, and it's already made it to $1,300. But with that said, Micro Center obviously has quite a bit of overhead given the fact that they have real traditional stores. Then obviously in like a week, if there was some kind of issue with it, Micro Center would likely have to foot that bill. So there are some things that they have to think about that your average eBayer doesn't, but we are literally talking about way less than half. It does seem a bit absurd. And next up for today, if you're planning on buying one of AMD's RDNA 2, meaning RX 6000 GPUs, you may want to hurry up. The reason is because, well, it looks like supply is seriously going down. As you can see right here from Tom's Hardware, it says AMD's RDNA 2 high-end graphics card supply is finally dwindling to nothing four years after launch. Specifically, these are the higher-end GPUs that we're looking at. As of right now, the 6800 is the only higher-end RDNA 2 GPU that's left at decent prices, but that's only thanks to two XFX variants that are priced under $400. The 6950 XT and 6900 XT are another story, though, because, well, as you can see right here, yeah, they do have them in stock but they're much higher than they were not too long ago. This one right here, 779, this one is sold out pretty much. This one, 789, 1148, so just absurd prices here, making it basically not even worth it, and definitely showing us that supply is ending. And of course, usually when you have new GPUs, pretty much everyone forgets about the old stuff, but because AMD's 7000 series, especially things like their 7800 XT, stuff like that, isn't really that much faster than last gen. Now their 7900 XTX obviously is, but the way that the pricing is, it really makes some of these last gen GPUs absolutely worth it. And you can actually see right here that Tom's Hardware sort of mentions this. They say in a normal GPU cycle, this should have happened shortly after the 7000 series debuted because companies don't want their new products to face stiff competition from existing parts. But in the post pandemic world of late 2022 and early 2023, there was a big demand for these higher end GPUs around the 7000 series launch and be dropped the price of the 6900 and 6950 XT to make way for more performant 7000 series. But really, that just made the 6000 series a really good buy, especially given just how expensive GPUs have gotten just with inflation in general. Anything that can save even a little bit of money is a lot of times worth it. Once again, especially when we're comparing it to stuff like, say, the 7800 XT, it's not that big of a jump from the 6800 XT. So yeah, if you are wanting to pick up the 6000 series, I'd actually say at least for the 6950 XT and 6900 XT, it's really not worth it at all. But if you're still wanting to pick up a 6800 card, you may want to jump on that pretty fast. And next up, we have a new release from AMD. Actually, a full new series of releases, two series of releases to be exact, from AMD and as they state right here at Tom's Hardware, this release actually allows AMD to lay claim to being the first with professional CPUs armed with MPUs for laptops and workstations. Well, what am I talking about here? We are talking about the Ryzen Pro 8000 series for desktop and the Ryzen Pro 8040 series for notebooks. So yeah, let's get right to them. 
Starting things off, we have the 8040 series, the Pro 8040 series lineup. And as you can see, pretty much across the board, these are identical to the non-Pro models. We're talking same amount of cores, same clock speeds, same TDP, pretty much everything. The only real difference is that these are their Pro models, so they come with better security features, professional features that they offer. So these are almost entirely for workstations. Well, these are for notebooks, but business notebooks that really need certain features that their regular CPUs don't have. And when it comes to performance, as you can see right here, the Ryzen 9 Pro 8945HS, this is specifically a 45 watt model that comes with the discrete graphics, so it's not gonna be using the APU, but when they compare it to Intel's in Topaz Labs video, it gets a whopping 50% faster performance. So this is AMD really touting AI here. And of course, that's pretty much entirely why they're releasing these for customers that wanna do AI workloads, things like that. They are definitely talking about AI here quite a bit. They also do have some other metrics that they show. And of course, once again, this is more or less their normal 8040 series. I definitely wouldn't expect different performance or anything like that. This is definitely stuff that we've already seen. Moving on, next up, they release what they're calling the Ryzen Pro 8000 series desktop processors, but really, it's just Ryzen Pro 8000G. And here also, as you can see, 8700G, 8700GE, 8600G, once again, AMD is really sticking hard to AI. You can see right here, featuring Ryzen AI. That is clearly something that they're really motivated at getting these out for. And one of the big reasons why is because when we compare it to Intel's chips, their 14th gen, well, obviously they don't have anything with an MPU in it. Therefore, as you can see, you know, leadership AI versus Intel, you get 16 tops while with Intel's you get zero. Then it also compares the mobile. You can see it ultimately wins there as well. This is obviously AMD really pushing hard into that AI segment. When it comes to release, both of these are set to come in Q2 of this year. And lastly for today, AMD's RX 8000 is seriously on the way, but not just that, it's also their next-gen RDNA 3 Plus. Don't forget that RDNA 3 Plus is set to be the GPU architecture that makes up AMD's next-generation APUs. And don't forget that we've actually seen some pretty wild performance coming out of those next-gen APUs, specifically the iGPU performance. So these are some pretty exciting releases, at least if you ask me. And it looks like AMD is heavily updating Linux for this release. As you can see right down here, it says this originally comes from for Onyx. And as you can see, it says that they report that AMD has rolled out huge AMD GPU and AMD KFD kernel driver patches, which brings several additions slated to merge ahead of Linux 6.10. Basically, AMD is gearing up for their release of both of these GPU architectures. And it's really looking like they're trying to get a lot of this out before the next Linux release. And basically what that means is when these do come out, they will more than likely have support in Linux. So I definitely say that these should be releasing before too, too long. Obviously we know that NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series is supposed to be releasing this year. Also, the Ryzen 9000 series is supposed to be releasing this year, RX 8000, as well as potentially those APUs. So yeah, if you were hoping to get any of these processors coming out later this year, you may wanna start saving now. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for RX 8000? And what did you think about the first story today? Is Micro Center Raiden only offering $700 or is that absolutely absurd? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.